Yeah, hello. Uh, hi, everyone. So we welcome you all uh, to the next MASA webinar series uh, from the Faculty of Dentistry. I'm Dr. Raghu. I'm a lecturer in endodontics, the Faculty of Dentistry. So uh, for today's uh, webinar, we we have a topic from the orthodontics, and it's a uh, he. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Ma Eng Ching from the Faculty of Dentistry will be going to speak on the interceptive orthodontics. I would like to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Ma Eng Ching. So Dr. Ma Eng Ching is a qualified orthodontist specialized in children and adult orthodontics, especially in complex or multidisciplinary cases. He graduated from University of Malaya in the year 2004 with bachelor's of dental surgery degree and obtained his membership in the year of 2008. In the same year, he was awarded the scholarship from the Ministry of Health Malaysia to pursue his doctorate degree in orthodontics from Bristol University, uh, United Kingdom. Dr. Ma completed his doctor of dental surgery from the University of uh, Bristol, uh, University of Bristol, United Kingdom, and membership of orthodontics from Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh in the year 2000. He was awarded the 3M Clinical Prize during his postgraduate study in the University of Bristol. Dr. Ma has served in the Ministry of Health from the year 2004 to 2018. Currently, he is teaching in the Masa University as a senior lecturer and practicing as a part-time orthodontist in the private dental clinics. So before I uh, request Dr. Ma to start with his uh, uh, lecture for today, so if the, if the viewers, if you have got any questions, you can just post it in the comment section and we will be answering you at the end of the presentation. So now I would like to request Dr. Ma to go ahead with his presentation. Dr. Ma, the screen is all yours. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Ma. I am the senior lecturer in the University of Massa, Faculty of Dentistry. Today, the topic is the interceptive orthodontic. But before we start, then maybe allow me to play a video uh, to promote Masa University. A step of growth from its humble beginnings has led Masa to what it is today. A renowned and multidisciplinary private institution in Malaysia. Masa offers programs in various levels, from pre-university, undergraduate, and postgraduate programs. Our Faculty of Medicine and Biomedical Science offers the best modern and traditional modes of learning, which includes subject-based, system-synchronized curriculum across all its programs. Core teaching skills are further enhanced by our modern facilities, which feature ultra-modern wet and dry anatomy laboratories, biomedical science laboratories, computer-assisted learning, CAL, and integrated digital laboratories. A dental surgeon provides professional support to the community to achieve and maintain optimal oral health. Our Faculty of Dentistry is committed to mentor our students in all levels of dental science. The joy of changing a person's life by creating a beautiful, healthy smile is one of the rewards of being a dentist. Dentistry is a complex field, as it is both challenging and rewarding. Our pharmacy programs are built on a foundation of experience taught by highly skilled practitioners constantly updated and include creative virtual and real-world experiences to equip you for modern practice. Our Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology provides a cohesive learning environment with fully equipped IMAC and engineering labs. Learn from an industry-based course to fully prepare you for the work environment exposure to our internship programs with our industry partners. Engineers are well positioned to address a variety of the crucial engineering issues facing societies today and are highly sought after in the areas of health, information, and energy. Our Faculty of Business, Finance, and Hospitality offers industry-focused programs designed to reflect global market trends. 
Participate in after-school activities at our well-equipped gym, grab a snack at Habitat Cafe, or chill at one of our many decked out student areas. See you at Massa University. Yep, that's a nice video done by Massa University. So today, we have a topic is intercepted orthodontic. If at any point I'm speaking too fast or the slightly lacking, do let me or the moderator know. Because sometimes the internet connection uh, might be not very well. So intercepted orthodontic, today we will cover the definition, the benefit, indication, the timing of interception, and finally come to the conclusion. So first, the definitions. Uh, the definition can be so many, but my favorite is the first and the last one. So intercepted orthodontic can be a preventive orthodontic to protect and preserve the occlusion. And second, to prevent the potential interference uh, with the occlusal development. And the last one is my favorite, to promote the favorable development changes and remove unfavorable changes. Whatever good, you promote. Then whatever not good, you try to remove it. So the advantage of early intervention is to reduce the treatment time in the future and reduce the complexity of the treatment in the future and reduce the trauma risk and the pathology and encourage the normal tender development and improve the self-esteem for the parent and, and the parental satisfaction. So for example, if a patient have a severe overjet, then prone to dental trauma. So why would we do is to reduce the risk and complexity of treatment in the future. So what's the indication for intercepted orthodontic? Uh, it can be the mild occlusion caused by the general factors be it skeletal pattern or the soft tissue, for example, the lip competent or the lip, uh, especially the lower lip trapped behind the upper incisor. Or it can be due to the mouth occlusion caused by the local factor. It can be abnormality in the number, extra or missing T, or abnormality in the form of the T it can be dilated, and abnormality in the position can be impacted or in the ectopic uh, position. Retain or early loss of primary teeth, traumatic occlusion, crossbite, and habit. So we talk to it one by one, and we cover some extra topic uh, for the prophylactic extraction of the sixes and the serial extraction, which is a guidance or eruption. So the first one is the mild occlusion caused by general factor. The, we come to the first topic is a class two. So we can do something for the class two skeletal pattern especially for the class 2 division 1 mild occlusion with the retrusive mandible, lip trap, incompetent lips, and increased overjet. So early treatment is reduce the risk of trauma to the upper incisor. So imagine if a kid have the upper teeth sticking out, whatever uh, hit on the upper, or whatever, whenever the, the kid fall down, then we hit on the upper incisor and cause a trauma. So the timing for the interception is uh, for the people during the, the group split, for the male, it's about 12 to 14 years old, and for the female, it's 10 to 12 years old. So what we can do is uh, using the functional plans or the myoplase to reduce the severity of the class two. So look at this picture. Uh, this patient has a severe overjet, so we can do a functional appliance to reduce the overjet. So what is functional appliance? Functional appliance uh, is an appliance utilize the forces of the orofacial muscle to move the teeth then usually cause the tipping movement of the teeth. Then you apply the traction between the two arches, upper and lower, and cause the favorable effect to mandibular growth. And at the same time, you restrain the maxillary growth. Then for example, we can use is a twin block. So look at this picture. This patient have a short mandible or restricted mandible. You can put a functional appliance to advance the mandible forward. So this appliance usually will uh, use it for about a year to get this effect. So same thing. Okay, just let me get the laser pointer. Okay, so this one is the same thing, it's a twin block. The twin block means they have the two blocks, one for the upper, one for the lower. Whenever the patient bite together, then it posture the lower jaw forward. By doing that, it creates a stress to the muscle then the muscle will help us to do the job. They'll push the top teeth backward and pushing the lower teeth forward. 
So by running this appliance about nine months, then we get the result, what we call the reduced overjet. So we can push the upper T backward. So another example for functional appliance, so CV overjet, then retrusive mandible. So you can put a functional appliance twin block, one for the upper, one for the lower, and the patient wear it for about a year, then we get the reduced overjet result. Of course, you ask the patient to wear this functional appliance night time or part time, then the lack of cushion settle down after three to six months. So if you're lucky, you might get away without treating the patient with a fixed appliance later. So the second method you can try is what we call the myobrace. It's quite new in the market. So uh, this function, this myobrace is just a plastic or silicon tray. So when they make the patient back together, then they will force the teeth into this groove. Right? We can see this plastic or silicon tray. They have the upper tray and the lower tray. So you can see my PowerPoint. Okay, this myobrace, they have uh, different stages, junior, kids, teens, and adult. So this myobrace is what we call the trend. Then you train the oral facial muscle in the better position. Then hopefully the jaw will develop in the better position as well. So there's a quick... Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, Dr. Ma. Uh, yeah, can you, yeah. I mean, if I cannot see you, you can just remove, I think there is something which is blocking your camera. I think. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry yeah. about that. Thank okay. you. So this myobrace, they come with a different strength as well. First, we will come, uh, start with a quite flexible silicone tray. Then slowly, we'll move to more rigid one. So there are different stages. You can change every six to nine months. Then by doing that, then the patient will get what we call the straighter teeth and a better uh, facial profile and uh, facial proportion. So you can see on the left side, it got a severe overjet. Then after you fit the myobrace for about a year, then the patient have to reduce over jet and the bottom T also be straighter. So the second thing we can do for is uh, the cast-free skeletal pattern. So for cast-free skeletal pattern, it's more tricky. So it will start early yeah, to reduce the severity of skeletal discrepancy. So the timing is best before the parietal suture fills, which is before the 10 to 11 years old. So. So the treatment I usually do is a reverse pull face mask or hip gear. So for example, this patient has a scatter castry. So you can put in a face mask. This face mask are using the forehead and the chin as an ankle, then attaching the elastic from this face mask to the upper jaw or the maxilla, then using this elastic to pull the maxilla forward. So this face mask also will take about one year to get what we call the satisfactory result. So you can see before patient have the reverse over jet, then it's more prominent max, um, manable. Then after a year of treatment, then we can reverse the over jet at the same time. Then the scatter pattern will be better. So you can see the facial profile changes where you form the cast three to a more class one skeletal pattern. Look at the facial or the lip profile change from the class three to a more class one uh, lip profile. So same thing. So this is also a face mask case. So it take about one year. So you can see the lip changes eh? it's from class three to almost a class two skeletal, or oh, sorry, class two lip profile. Now we come to a mild approaching cause of local factor. The first one is the number. Eh? It can be extra or less. Eh? The first one is a supernumerary, which means an extra teeth in the mouth. So the incidence is about 1%. What's the clinical sign and symptom? The central incisor can be clinically missing or unerupted, or even the erupted can be displaced or rotated. Then the supernumerary can be erupted or unerupted. Then patient can have a retained decidus, which is an A or central incisor decidus. The patient can present with a median diastema. We can look at it one by one. Uh, in the following pictures. So in this picture, it present with the median diastema, it's more than three millimeters. Then after you take the x-ray, you can look at this uh, occlusal x-ray. There are two supernumerary inside, then which is causing the median diastema. So same thing, same patient. So we can correct uh, this uh, mild occlusion by removing the supernumerary. Then after that, we can use the URA to reverse the overjet. 
Then after that, you can use a fixed braces to finish the case. So if the supernumerary erupted, most probably this is going to display the central incisor. Look at the top picture. You see after the supernumerary uh, erupted, then they are pushing the upper incisor backward. So this is the second picture. picture. It shows that the supernumerary is displacing the central incisor sideways. So same thing, supernumerary erupted, then they display the central incisor to sideways and the front, sometimes at the back. So same thing, erupted supernumerary, then pushing the central incisor sideways. So if possible, all the supernumerary cases, you should take an X-ray just to verify there are no extra supernumerary inside. Most of the time, there are second, second supernumerary inside, uh, is buried inside the maxilla, we should be careful. Sometimes you remove one, you forget the other one is still buried inside. It can cause uh, negligent cases. So it's always a good practice to take an X-ray for the supernumerary case. So same thing, huh? this one supernumerary erupted, then displacing the central incisor sideway. But if you take an X-ray, then you look at it, then there's one more supernumerary still buried inside. So same thing, erupted supernumerary, then displacing the central incisor. If you take an X-ray, then there's one more extra supernumerary inside. So imagine huh, if this supernumerary you remove early, then the central incisor will come back to the ninth position, which makes your job much easier. If you take it out later after the canine erupted, then most probably you have to fix it with the fixed braces huh, to straighten the teeth further. So always remove the supernumerary early if possible. So supplemental tea it just means the extra tea looks similar size and shape compared to the normal tea. So on the left picture, you look at the central incisor and retro incisor. There are two retro incisors huh, on the right side. And you look at the bottom at the second picture, you have supernumerary or supplementary uh, second premolar. Okay, just now we talk about supernumerary. Now we talk about hypotensia. Hypotensia means just missing tea in the upper or lower jaw. The incident is about 1 to 3%. Then the 3 usually absent is the upper 2 or the lower 5. Then usually the lower is more common than the upper. The clinical sign and symptom can be the retained primary T, then missing permanent T, or even the submerged deciduous second molar or first molar. So this picture just shows that there's a missing 1, 5, 3, 5, and 4, 5. Then I can double confirm with the X-ray. So if you're in doubt, always take the X-ray to verify. So this one same thing, but it's missing upper uh, canine and the impaction of the lateral uh, second premolar. Then this uh, is a case of missing one two, one three, two two, and three four. Again, you can verify by the X-ray. So sometimes, uh, if you take a periapical to verify hypotension, which is not enough, sometimes the tea can be buried deep inside. So sometimes OPG might be a better X-ray to verify hypotension. So we talk about extra tea, we talk about less tea, then now we come to the abnormality in form, which is dye restoration. So the definition is the deformation on the two angulation between the crown and the root or can be within the root itself. So the cause can be trauma at the four to five years old to the central incisor deciduous. So the clinical sign and symptom can be retained primary T or dilacerated or uninterrupted or displaced of the central incisor, permanent incisor. So as we all know, the permanent incisor develop palatal or lingual to the root of the deciduous T. But about four to five years old, this central incisor will move forward which is directly above the deciduous incisor. As about four to five years old, if something hit on the deciduous incisor, then it cause direct force to the central incisor, permanent, permanent incisor. Then if this force is too big, then it can push the upper incisor, crown or the root, uh, the complete incisor upward, then the remaining of the root will form into normal direction, which will cause the direct restoration. 
So there's a typical example for that restoration. Huh? So imagine if the crown is pushed upward, then the root is continue forming in the vertical direction. Once you align the teeth, the root might stick out from the labial bone. So that is the uh, from the x-ray. Most of the time, most of the time, you can only see the crown huh, without the root because they're overlapping. They're overlapping. So it can be unerupted or sometimes they erupted partially or palpable, but they're not going to erupt further because the root uh, and the crown is bent in the different angle. So this is the same thing, unerupted, and that is the central incisor. So from the CAT X-ray, you can see the crown is pointed upward, then while the remaining root is formed in the normal direction. So even though they are erupted, it can be displaced upward most of the time. So sometimes it causes irritation, irritation to the gum or the lips or the mucosa, which are called inflammation infection. So now we come to the topic, which is the uh, eruption of the upper incisor. So a lot of time we have to pay attention to the central, central incisor about seven to nine years old, which is the uh, time to erupt. So if a failure to erupt or delay the eruption of problem can be recognized early, it's about seven to nine years old. So when the management can be removed while blocking the incisor from coming out, uh, which is a supernumerary or any obstruction or autonotum, if there's too much of space, we can close it, or if not enough space, then we have to open the space for the central incisor. So if you decided not to put a gold change or any attachment to the central incisor, then you have to monitor the eruption. If you put a gold chain or any attachment, you can choose to align the incisor with a fixed appliance. So this is a typical example. Uh, the central incisor 1-1 is failed to erupt due to supernumerary. But it's quite superficial. So after you remove the supernumerary, you can see the incisor is popping up very soon. So this is a bit further inside the central incisor, which is blocked by the supernumerary or autonotum. So you need to do a surgery to remove the autonotum or supernumerary. And after that, I think it's a good practice. If you do a surgery, then you try to stick something on the central incisor so we can use it later if necessary, rather than subject the kid to two surgery if you want to stick a coach and later. So this is an example, the central incisor impacted and caused by this supernumerary. Then we do a surgery to remove it. Then after that, we put a gold chain attached to the bury incisor. Then we use a URA, upper removal appliance, which are arm then to pull the central incisor out. So this one is quite a simple treatment. Everyone can do it. The reason why I use the uh, upper removal appliance is because the last time in the government practice, fixed appliance have a long waiting list. So same thing, different case. This one unerupted central incisor, then it's blocked by this supernumerary. You can see from the X-ray or cruiser and the PA. So what I did is uh, I, did the uh, I did the extractions or removal of the supernumerary. Then I just monitor. I didn't do anything because it's quite superficial. After removal, I put a space maintainer, then I monitor the eruption. So the central incisor come through. So then later, when I go to a prior practice, then I start using fixed appliance, which I think is faster, it's more, uh, uh, more expectable because you take away the compliance from the patient. So fixed appliance, the principle is the same. Mm -hmm. Then you say you have to remove all the obstruction or supernumerary. Then if possible, if you do a surgery, then you put a gold chain or attachment. Then you use a fixed appliance, uh, can be partial or sectional. Fixed appliance, then to align the T accordingly. So that's before and after. So you can see so much improvement on the aesthetic side. Then you give more confidence to the kid as well. So in the early intervention is very important to the kid, especially the uh, self-esteem. So a lot of times, this erupted supernumerary and another erupted upper incisor, you need an X-ray. You need an X-ray to verify. Because sometimes supernumerary can be look similar to the central incisor. 
So same thing, this one is a retained central incisor for the deciders. Then you have a buried incisor, permanent incisor inside. Then you have an obstruct by this supernumerary above the central incisor. So the same principle we apply, we remove whatever obstruct or blocking the central incisor from coming out. Then if you do a surgery, I think it's a good practice. Huh? We always take a gold change or attachment on the central incisor in case you want to use it to align the teeth later. So same thing, huh? So, but this one is not caused by the obstructions of the supernumerary. It basically caused by this dye restoration. You can only find by the closer x-ray at the bottom, right? So in this case, I will still align the T early, huh? if possible. So the latest guidelines say that if you can align the super uh, the dye restorated T early, then the remaining T will continue to form into the right, pos uh, right position or right direction. So if you can align the dye restorated T early, then the rest of the root will form into a nice direction. So you still can save, save these two. So for example, this one dye restorated to pointing upward, then causing the gingival irritation. So what I do, I align it with the simple upper removal appliance. So I simply I use an elastic to pull the teeth out. So you can see after you pull the teeth out, then irritation is gone. Right? They're not causing any damage to the surrounding um, gingiva or mucosa, then the tissue will be more healthier. So you can use a very simple removal appliance to align the central incisor if you want to. So the principle is more important to the uh, appliance you use. Huh? So always remove whatever is blocking the central incisor from coming out. Even though they are deformed or die restorated, then you try to align early. So same thing, you see this one is a uh, dilacerated incisor, but they cannot come out. They're causing what we call um, pouch, or you can palpate it labially, but it's not coming out. So what I did is I use the upper simple removal appliance then to align this uh, dilacerated central incisor. So first we expose the central incisor, then we put a bracket, then attach with the Leakage wire, then we use this leakage wire to bring the teeth down. So I'm not sure you're aware there's a guideline from the Ministry of Health which updated by myself and a, a group of specialists. So if you have time, you can go through it. So now we come to MRT in position, means uh, the two can be ectopic and impacted. So the most common impacted two can be upper canine and the lower lateral, let, uh, lower second premolar. So the upper canine is the last two to come out in the maxilla, uh, whereas the lower lateral, uh, lower second premolar is the last one to come out in the mandible. So impacted three, then the incident is one to two percent. Then it can be unilateral or bilateral. Unilateral will be more common, it's about seventy five percent. Then bilateral can be about seventeen to twenty five percent. So mandible is less common because the mandible, the canine will come out before the premolar. Maxilla is the most common impactor for the canine. Then for, uh, it can be parotal, which is 61%. Inline, 34%. It can be buccally impacted, about 5%. So if you're buccally erupted, then most probably they will come out. Uh, come out. They are not impacted. So parotal is most common, then followed by inline then buckler is less common. So most of the impacted case happen in the maxilla. So what is the cause for impacted canine? It can be due to develop high in the maxilla, it take a long time to come down. So a long path of eruption and the leg interruption. Then abnormal form, it can be dilacerated, and it can be missing lateral incisor. So according to a lot of experts, the lateral incisor is guiding the canine from coming down. So let's say if a missing lateral incisor, then most probably the canine will lose the direction. So they are, may be impacted. Then it can be due to the obstruction or retained C, or it can be due to supernumerary, supernumerary or autumnal. So what's the consequences of this impacted canine? It can cause a resorption of the root of the upper lateral incisor, or the adjacent two can be due to the first 
premolar. It can cause a cystic change of the follicle. If you're not careful, the cystic or the follicle can expand and become a cyst. Then it can cause a displacement of the adjacent teeth and uh, be it the lateral incisor or the first premolar. What's the clinical sign symptom? It can be missing or asymmetrical eruption. One side erupted, then the other side is not erupted. Then retain C cause the uh, canine impacted. Then displacement of the adjacent to, like say, lateral incisor or the first premolar. So look at this picture. Huh? So the canine is missing clinically, one tree and two tree. If you take an X-ray, you know that the, the, the canine is impacted uh, on one side, the left side, then the right side is transposed. So same thing, impacted and uninterrupted uh, two tree. Then this side is wedged between the two and four. This, so this side is in line, which is about 30% of the case. And impacted tree can be asymmetric eruption, one side erupted, the other side is not erupted. So you take x-ray, you look at the canines, is horizontal impacted. Same thing, asymmetrical eruption of two tree, unerupted one tree, and retain a five tree. So the decidus canine is still retained because the permanent is not coming out. So impacted two tree can display the central incisor sometimes. Huh? If there are two missily placed, then it can cause a pressure to the root of the central incisor. So you can see the central incisor is flaring out or jetting out due to the pressure from the impacted canine. Okay, same thing. So like I said before, most of the buckery impacted canine, if you give it time, they will erupt. So this is less common, it's cost about 5%, 5% of the cases. So buckley impacted canine most probably will erupt with time. So lower, lower canine impaction, which is a bit uh, uncommon, then usually caused by the obstructions or supernumerary or autonomous. So what's the management of this impacted canine? So you need to recognize the case early. So for the upper canine, usually come out about 11, 12 years old. That's the time you have to monitor the patient closely. So there are a few options. You can align the impacted canine, or you can transplant, or you can surgically remove it if it's too high or unfavorable position, or you can monitor if you decided to leave alone. We'll come to that one by one. So first, you can uh, expose the two, then do a surgery. It can be open exposure or closed exposure. Both is okay, depends on surgeon preference and autonomy preference. So if you choose to expose the two and bond the cold chain, then most likely you have to align it, uh, whether with a fixed or removable appliance, which can show on the right pictures. Same thing, you can expose the two, then you can use a fixed appliance to pull the teeth out or align the impacted canine. So this impacted canine alignment, which usually take a longer time than a conventional braces. So conventional braces case, most probably will take about two years or one and a half years, but the canine impacted then usually take about two and a half years to three years. So same thing, this is surgical exposure, then use a braces, fixed braces, to align the T. And in this case, take about two and a half years. So sometimes, huh, sometimes if the two is still have uh, this, what we call eruption potential, means the root is not fully formed. If you open the space, huh, then the canine will come out by itself. So the first step, you always open the space first, then if necessary, you expose the two and align it later. So sometimes if the two is unfavorable position or sometimes the patient is too old, they're not keen for braces, you can choose to remove it. But if you choose to monitor, or if you choose to leave alone, then you need to monitor the two, the impacted canine closely. So to prevent it from becoming pathological cyst or it displays other T as well. So you have to monitor it with the x-ray, maybe yearly or every two years. So impacted lower bicep space, which is uh, quite common also, especially in the mandible, because the lateral, I uh, sorry, the second premolar is the last one to come up in the mandible. So from this picture, I'll show that impacted three, five, four, five. 
and then sometimes can be four, 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 uh, four, three, four. So this case is impactor one five four five. Impactor one five four five, and then like I say, if the two is still have the eruption potential, if you open up the space, then the two most likely they will come up by itself even without any auto traction. Same thing, but I look at this two, this one is a different case. You look at the two, they are a bit shorter, huh? the five is a bit shorter than the four, which means they are weakened in nature. So a lot of time after that, after you open the space, the two is still not coming out. You might need auto traction huh, to bring it out, just to help it out a little bit. Huh? But you see the root is continue growing huh? from a shorter root then to a longer root. It's just a bit delayed in development. So other tea can be impacted also, huh? especially the sixes, then sometimes uh, seven. Okay, this one is a six as well, the lower right six impacted. Seven can be impacted. And sometimes can be the sixes impacted against the E or the decidus. So sometimes you can do just a simple treatment by putting what we call the separator or orthodontic elastic, then just put in the sepa, put in the internet space, then get disimpacted too nicely, provided it's not too severely impacted. Of course, you can use uh, what we call the mini screw or fix appliance to upright the impacted too. Upper impacted seven and upper lower impacted seven, you can use the braces to upright them. Same thing, impactor seven, you can upright it with the fixed braces. Okay. Now we come to the retained primary T. Sometimes the decidus T just refuses to go. Huh? It means it's, it's, it's beyond the time or aspirations. So the successor can be missing, impacted or displaced. What's the clinical sign and symptom? It can be delayed, failure to erupt of the successor. It means the permanent adult T is not coming out. Then displacement of the adult T because the permanent T cannot come out. The trap beneath the decidus T. So you can displace sideways. So other signs and symptoms can be a submerged D or E. We look at it one by one. So for this case, you have to retain E, uninterrupted 2, 5, and the missing 1, 5, 3, 5, and 4, 5. So you can confirm with the X-ray. OPG usually the best one. So it can be submerged 7, 5. You can see the bottom left one. X-ray, that's a submerged 7, 5, uninterrupted 3, 5, because it displays. I say whatever stuck inside can be displaced aside way. So submerge six five, then cause a displacement to the two five. Submerge five four, then displace one four. Can double confirm with the X-ray. Especially this is a periapical X-ray, it shows that submerge five four for the D, then causing the displacement to the one four. So what's the treatment I recommend for this submerged uh, decidus? I would recommend you try to remove it before it's submerged further or before it's missing. Huh? Sometimes it's submerged a little bit or infraocruded. You can try to remove it early. But remember, remember to put a space maintainer so that the permanent adult tea can come out nicely. If you just take out the submerged tea, most probably the next two will tip into the space and causing what we call the impaction later. So early loss of the primary T or the leak loss or retained primary T can cause problem. Both also can cause problem. So the early loss of the primary T, uh, if the crowded arches, then the primary T are natural space maintainer. If you lose it too early, then it cause what we call crowding. So early loss of CDE can cause a loss of space for the successor, which is a permanent T. Then it causes the tipping of sixes forward, then impaction of the five, and if the E lost early, then it causes a midline, whether the upper or lower, can shift to the left or right side. Then the space arch, then if you have a bigger arch, a lot of spaces, then early loss, usually the effect is not much. So typical example, uh, the canine, the decidus canine, if you lose it too early, then it could affect the center line, but a little effect on the molars. So the center most probably will off to the side of the missing canine or the decidus canine. 
So the result, the crowding in the four region, the premolar can be crowded. So if you lost the first molar, first species molar, then it can affect both the center line and the permanent molar also. So the result in crowding the three region. So the center line can off to one side, then the molar, permanent molar can tip forward, which causes an impaction of the second uh, premolar later. But if it comes to second molar, there's either second molar uh, early loss, and they only affect molar. But they have the little effect on the central incisor. The further back you go, then the little effect on the central incisor. So look at this case, have an early loss of the E, then the central incisor, sorry, you look at the midline, they are not far off, huh? maybe about one or maybe 0.5 millimeter off. But look at the uh, five, huh? the lower right five is impacted because the six have moved forward. They tilted initially and caused the impaction of the second premolar. So same case, you look at the uh, left side, the decidus huh? second molar, which uh, we lost it early, then the six will tilt forward. So that caused the impaction of the five later, which is on the right side. So impacted three, four, three, five, and tipping of sixes. Again, it's early loss of the E or D, then it caused an easier tilting of the sixes, then it caused impaction of the five and four. So when do we do the space maintainer? Uh, really, whenever possible. Huh? So every time you take out permanent, sorry, take out decidus, D or E, if possible, then you do the space maintainer, which may make our life much easier later. If you leave it without the space maintainer, most likely huh, the sixes will tilt forward, that cause impaction of the second premolar. So now we come to traumatic occlusion. So it can be caused by the deep bite or the cross bite. Then the effect can be attrition of the central incisor or retro incisor or canine, or it can cause a gingival recession to the, again, central incisor. Most of the time it's a lower incisor and it causes stripping of the upper gum palatal usually, central incisor. So this one is a typical example for traumatic occlusion. You can see the cross back on the upper left one then to the lower left one. Then it causes a gingival recession on the three one. Because you keep having this heavy force on the central incisor of the lower, then it displays the central incisor forward, which a buckle bone can be quite thin. And if you keep having this traumatic force, then in long term, they will cause what we call the gum recession. Then sometimes if you are too severe, then it causes uh, sensitivity or even uh, it might have to lose the central incisor later. So this one is a typical example for deep bite. Whenever they come to deep bite, always check for this traumatic occlusion. Check the palatal gum. Huh? It can be uh, traumatic or stripping gum. Then sometimes if the force is too heavy and it can cause what we call the two uh, devitalize in long term and it causes, you see the top left pictures, it causes sinus. This two is not white. So if too heavy force in long term, then it can be a problem. So cross bite, by definition, buckle cross bite can be the lower T or outside the upper T. Or C is can be the other way, upper T or crude outside the lower T. And they cross by traumatic or crude and cause attrition, gingival recession, clinical, and sometimes the mandible can be displaced left, right, or backward, or the TMJ can be a problem because in this force, you keep pushing the one side. And if this problem continues, the patient might develop what we call the facial asymmetry. So developmental of occlusion display position, which I just mentioned before. So the early treatment is advised for all these cross back if possible. If delayed, then treatment can be difficult because the space can be lost, then reduce and stop further damage to the gingival attachment. So if you stop or they correct the cross back, then most probably, most probably the gingival recession will improve 
they even will grow back to normal level. So they prevent the development of occlusion in the displaced position and undesirable growth pattern. So for example, asymmetry jaw, if you correct it early, then maybe the patient have a chance to go back into the central, which avoid the surgery later. So whatever we do now, I like say you simplify the treatment later, it makes your life for the patient and the orthodontist or the doctor life easier, much easier later. So for example, this patient, so many patients, let's say so many patients, so many cases, they have a cross spine in the anterior. Some are causing gingival recession, some are not. So if, if you can intercept early, then this gum recession can be prevented. So you can see this is this is not a young patient, but it's one of my uh, adult patients. You see, after we corrected the cross spine, there's so much of recession, uh, so much of attrition on the central incisor of the upper. So if you can correct it early, those attrition can be prevented. So this is a young kid, then uh, central incisor, gum recess, then if you correct it, it later, you can see the gum level huh, is grow back or the gum is actually becoming better. So again, another case, this I have a uh, displacement forward. It means they have initial contact on the central incisor, then the lower jaw displaced forward. So you can correct it with a simple upper removal appliance with a spring. So after you correct the cross back, then hopefully be stable. Huh? If the jaw is growing, longer, sometimes this treatment can be not stable. So in the crossbite, again, you can use the upper removal appliance, just push the central incisor forward, then you can correct this, what we call the uh, crossbite, and you can improve the gum recession as well. So if, if you are really keen for, uh, for fixed appliance, you can do what we call the 2 by 4 or sectional braces or fixed braces to correct this crossbite. So sectional braces usually faster than removal because whatever fixed braces, it take away the compliance from the patient. It means the control is on your side. So for example, this patient, even one receipt, and you can reverse the bike. Then we debone after three months when the bike is stabilized. So you can see the gum recession improved right? from the first picture, the lower left one, then the gum recession improved at the end of treatment, even though just three months of treatment. Okay, so this is a more complicated case, it's more tricky. Look at the central incisor and upper center line and lower center line is far off from each other. Then the right side having scissor bite, the left side having the cross bite. So whenever a patient bite together, you're pushing the lower jaw to the left, then causing what we call the TMJ stress. Sometimes it causes a TMJ problem or TMJ PDS. So look at the facial pictures on the right side, the first picture, you can see obviously the lower jaw is off to the left side. So we decided to intercept this patient early. So we put a fixed braces, we call it the scissor bite, we call it the cross bite. So even though it's not complete yet, the case, but you can see the face is back to the central. You can see the lower mandible, the chin point is more to the right side now, which is more central. So now we come to a local factor, which means habit. It can be sucking the thumb, sucking pacifier, or biting on the pencil. Whatever bad habit have to stop. So the clinical sign symptom, this sucking thumb habit or pacifier can cause an anterior open bite. It can increase the overjet and post up cause bite because they're pushing the thumb downward or depressing the thumb. So the upper maxilla is underdeveloped. So it causes a cross bite at the back. So this picture on the right side, the cartoon, which is just to summarize everything we say just now, you can basically, if you put the thumb in the mouth, then you push the upper incisor forward, then pushing the thumb downward, then we're causing what we call the underdeveloped maxilla, then we are cause a cross bite, sometimes unilaterally or sometimes bilateral. Of course, uh, it can cause the anterior open bite. So for this patient, sometimes you'll deny or refuse to admit they have the thumb sucking habit. So you have to check the tongue, huh? whether they have a bite or the sucking mark on the tongue. Or if they don't have it, then maybe you need to diversify. So what's the management? The first and the most effective way to stop this habit is by counseling. 
you have to explain to the patient and the parents what's the reason you have to stop the thumb sucking habit. So the effect can be temporary if the before incisor eruption. If the upper is central or the upper permanent incisor erupted or the root is fully formed, then effect can be permanent. So of course, there's the other way you can do by fitting a, what called appliance, it can be removable, fixed appliance, then with a spur or whatever, something sharp to stop the patient from sucking the thumb. So when the patient sucks the thumb, then they'll cause the pain to the thumb. So that's a patient, how, how, how to stop the patient. Of course, sometimes you may put a, a stocking or a mitten to cover the thumb. But I just think this is not the effective way because whenever you're not around or the patient's sleeping alone, then you can take away this uh, st stocking or whatever mitten. So I never put one of those in my patient before, but when I found this picture from uh, the internet then you can use a fixed appliance, then with all the spur, the scary spur, then to detail the thumb sucking habit. Or sometimes you can put just a simple removal appliance. The main idea is to break the seal. So you see the, all the thumb sucking patients, they feel good because they have the oil seal, they seal the thumb, then they feel the suction in the mouth. So if you can break this seal, then you can break the habit. So now we come to the last two topics of our presentation. First one is a prophylactic extraction of the sixes. Then this one is quite tricky. Then you have to be a bit careful. The effect depends on the timing of the loss of the sixes. So if you extract it before the five and seven erupted, which is about eight to 10 years old, then it causes a distal drift of the five, which is the second premolar. And you can relieve the crowding in the three and four regions. Then you can get what we call the reasonable contact between the five and seven. Then the mesial drift of the seven, it means the seven will move forward, then the five will move backward. Then it'll come with a nice contact if you extract it at the right time. Of course, if you lost one cent uh, sixes on one side, which is a big space, it causes a center line will shift also. So what's the ideal case for this extraction of sixes? Then we mainly we do for this uh, class one patient, then the mild to moderate crowding, then no rotation, no rotation uh, on the seven and the five, then all successor T are present, mean all other permanent T are present, especially if possible, then the egg or the third molar is present because we take out one first molar, then you need the second molar to replace the first molar, then the third molar to replace the second molar. Then the second molar root, root bifurcation, it just begins to form. Huh? If they're already fully formed, most probably they won't drift forward nicely. Huh? What they do is they just tip forward and causing what we call the impaction. So extraction of six ideal case, then all the sixes are badly decayed or sometimes they are heavily filled. So you can take it out. Then you follow the case closely. If possible, every six months, then, oh, sorry. So you can see five years following the extraction of the sixes, then the seven will move forward. So the time is before the bifurcation form. So then the seven will drift forward. Then when the egg or the third molar come together, then they will just come on nicely to replace the second molar. So the job is not done. Eh? After you extract the six, then you have to follow the patient, follow up the patient closely, just to make sure the second molar will drift forward nicely and the third molar also is there. So the loss of the three six for after eruption of seven, three seven. So if you take out the three six after, after the eruption of the seven, then most probably, like I say, the seven will tilt forward, but then they're going to drift forward. They just tilt forward and they stop. So they're causing the tilting of the seven, then the big space between the five and seven, and sometimes the upper will over erupt. Like this case, you see the bottom left, huh? bottom left, the upper six will over erupt a little bit. So they cause more complication now. So you have to extract the six at the right timing. It's very important. So if you're not sure, I would suggest always refer to the specialist for the assessment. So loss of the four six after eruption is four seven. Uh, same thing. You see, after you extract, uh, after the four seven erupted, you extract the six. Then most probably the seven will tilt forward, but they're not going to get the contact between the five and seven. So if if let's say, huh, let's say seven is already erupted, then when you see the patient, then the six is in the proper prognosis. So 
if you extract the seven, if you extract the six now, then most probably it cause the tipping, the rolling, and the rotation of the seven, and it cause a poor contact between the five and seven, and they also cause a disruption disruption of the occlusion because the tipping the seven and over eruption of the upper six, then they cause the occlusion disruption. Then they cause a, they, they, they also uh, cause a little relief of the crowding because the space is not fully utilized compared if you do it early, which a five will drift backward, then they relieve the crowding at the front of the middle. So the six, to be honest, the six is never the choice of the extractions because the six space is so big, it's about 11, 10 to 11 millimeters. It's very difficult to close it. So if you want to extract the six, then sometimes uh, yeah, it, 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 it's uh, better to refer for assessment. Uh, then if the seven is already erupted, then you better leave the six alone. So if the seven is already erupted, there's no point you extract the six because the seven is not going to drift forward then the five is not going to drift backward. So if the seven is really erupted, then it's better to leave the six alone. Don't extract it first until the definite auto treatment lateral, which is uh, planned by the dentist or the orthodontist lateral. We can fully utilize the space for extraction the six lateral. So, but between waiting for the fixed braces, then let's say the six is have symptomatic pain or discomfort, then you can do some temporary pop. Uh, treatment or the brick and art treatment to relieve the pain or the symptom. So this is a typical example. We wait, huh? even though the sixes is uh, in the pro prognosis, uh, retain root, then badly decay, then we wait. We wait until the patient uh, is about 12 years old or above 13 years old. Then we start what we call the fixed braces. Then we can extract the six and then putting the fixed braces, then we can close the gap by breaking the seven forward then you can let the egg erupt later. So which in this case, huh, all six are removed. Then we bring the seven forward. Then hopefully, huh, hopefully the egg will erupt into a nice place. So this is the last topic of the lecture. Then we come to serial extractions. So serial extraction is a bit outdated, huh, but it's good to know the concept behind it. So the definition is timely extraction of primary and permanent teeth to allow the spontaneous tooth movement so that no appliance treatment is needed later, which is the idea. So the guidance of the eruption concept, it means uh, they remove the two at the right timing so we can guide the teeth to erupt in the night position. So the timing of extraction of spontaneous tooth movement, yeah. Then they are not really practical from my point of view because I will tell you later why. So serial extractions, it means they have to extract four set, sorry, Three set of T. Three set of T means 12, 12 in total. Uh, so you just remember CD4, extract the C, then extract the D, then extract four of the four later. So total in 12, uh, 12 T in three times, three times. So the reason why they extract the C, so they can reduce the crowding on the central and the lateral incisor. So once it's settled, make sure the uh, T have enough space to align for the incisor. Then you extract the D, so they let the four come out early. So once the four come out, then, then you extract the four as well, then to let the canine come into a uh, nice place or nice position. So this, uh, I can't find any picture. So I can find this uh, extraction of the four, upper four, then to let the impacted canine to come down. So you can see after extract, then they put the, what we call the space maintainer, then the upper simple removal appliance then the canine will come down nicely. So what's the disadvantage of these uh, serial extractions? This patient to 12 extraction, which is quite long. Personally, I think it's quite long. So four times extractions, huh? then four times three, sorry, three times, three times, then four each time, then 12 in total. So timing extraction is critical. If you miss the time, then extract the T, then it wouldn't get the best result. Then they encourage the four, four erupt before the three, but the lower, as we all know, the three usually erupt before the four, then it was a problem. Then the crowding sufficient to justify extraction of four. Let's say it's very crowded, see the crowded, then the space all will close. But if the arch is quite big, then it's not much of crowding. If you extract the four, then most probably it leave a lot of gap behind. Then the most importantly, after so many extraction, 
then a client might be needed. And you have to put a fixed appliance later, they will put the tea in the nice position. So I just think it's too much to take in. If you take up 12 tea, then you tell the patients or the parents, you might need the braces later. Then I think not many people can accept that. So why they start this uh, serial extraction? Because in 19, 1930, then there's not much of, uh, not many orthodontists. Those, they try to minimize the treatment for the patient. That's why they do this preventive treatment. They take out so many teeth, just prevent the crowding in the future. But now I think there's so many doctors around, so this is not a problem. So I think more many people are still practicing this serial extraction now. So in conclusions, so you have to do the early and the timely treatment, right time, right treatment, which make your treatments or your life much easier later. So the early mixed technicians can be seven, nine years old, which is best time to intercept. So both synthesis problem is occur in this time, seven to nine years old. So it can be eruption of the incisor alignment, can be retained or early loss of primary teeth. So then after that, you move to 10 to 12 years old, which you have to monitor the impacted teeth, be it canine or the premolar, uh, upper three, lower five. Then the mouth occlusion for the skeletal three and skeletal two, you can do something functional or face mask to reduce the severity of the problem. So it's very important to do the auto screening at the, your, your six month or annual dental examinations. So just look at all the teeth. So most important, you count all the teeth and make sure they are erupt at the right time and the right sequence. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Then that's my email. If you have any question, you can send me an email. And I would like to thank uh, Dr. Dr. Tan Kim Chu, who contribute quite a lot like, in this uh, presentation. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ma, for the wonderful presentation. In fact, it was a very clear and interesting presentation with uh, a lot of well-documented clinical cases. And I'm sure that the viewers have definitely benefited from the uh, from this webinar. Uh, I don't see any questions over here, actually. So I, I, I assume that they have followed it uh, very well throughout the presentation. And then before I end with the, today's uh, broadcast, uh, I would like to request the, the viewers to stay, in, stay tuned to the MASA Facebook page where we keep updating our upcoming up, uh, about the upcoming webinars. And thank you so much for uh, joining us and see you people soon with the upcoming webinars. And thank you so much. Stay safe and then take care. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, okay. I don't see any questions. So... Uh, I'm going to end the broadcast uh, for now. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ma, for the very good presentation. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Uh, take care.